And we are live. Kind of live. Welcome, Meredith. Hey, thank you so much for having me. I had a blast the last time I was on the what snail did, show. What did we talk about last time? We didn't really do too much astrology, did we? I think we talked about the erection. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and <laughs> the... Um, geez, there was a lot going on. We probably talked about, like the capital thing yeah, <laughs> too, yeah, yeah. just because that was like right after that I think uh, it has been know, a little people bit. are trying to say that that's like worse than 9-11 like some people the the lefties are saying that mm-hmm. like the, the like the journal like the Rachel Maddows are trying to get yeah. them, like to say that which that, is just that whole, and it's like that whole stage the like, whole... can you imagine hearing that and like having lost like your a family member like it's like whatever it's like the left is eating itself <laughs> we are on the upside down oh yeah so left is right right is left mm-hmm. yes is no totally you know when i was um, when i was growing up i didn't really pay too much attention to politics but it didn't seem to me at that time that one of the two you know the only two you're allowed to think about aside from maybe the green party it didn't seem like one of them necessarily was much better or much worse like it was just this is a you know a two-party system that is incredibly ridiculous in the first place but they they both had their goods and they had their bads right yeah and they play on like people's values like um you know i guess like the right or whatever like more values like autonomy liberty freedom um rights things of that nature and then the left seems to value more like community doing for others which is like a very like honorable place that some people are coming from you know but it's just kind of like that whole I saw a meme that was really perfect it was about this it was like the like 2011 left where like they were like occupying Wall Street and whatnot and Mm -hmm. you know compared to today where they're like do what they tell you (laughs) you know it's like it's just fascinating um but i think it's really like i've had a lot of friends because i grew up in a conservative household like my mom is catholic and i was confirmed catholic i was like oh really i went through that sacrament (laughs) you did the catechism like the classes Mm -hmm. yeah yeah like the faith formation yep is what they call it which is pretty creepy so i definitely had to do some energy work around that day because I do feel like when you make a sacrament you're like making a sacrament like a right ritual type Mm -hmm. of thing you You might be binding yourself with something right oh yeah so I just like took it back it's the same thing I did with my Reiki attunements I just like imagined myself in that like time and place and then I just reversed it Mm -hmm. like I visual like I visualized it in reverse and then it's like it never happened did you feel anything? Did you feel any type of release after that? Yeah. When I did it for my Reiki attunements, like, the release was really, really strong. But that's, I think, because I was agreeing in my heart, like, that, yes, I would like to receive this attunement, you know, where, mm-hmm. like, by the time my confirmation came around, I was such a fucking, like, little shit to my <laughs> to my parents. So I was just like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. <sighs> fine. Fine. You know, so when it came time to do the like the reversal you know there was a little release with the sacrament of confirmation confirmation or whatever but um the reiki attunements were like whoa yeah because did i talk to you last time about my like or my experiences with that with reiki or with catechism Mm -hmm. thing I don't remember. Uh, we might have talked about Me it because I, I was in Reiki also for a couple of years and I got all the attunements. I got Reiki 2 certified. I was in it for like two years with, with Eden in San Francisco. That's cool. Well, what were your experiences? Because I received Reiki last year at the end of the year from someone who like agreed not to use the symbols on me, but mm-hmm. just has a really natural connection to the all. And like it didn't seem to matter in that instance. But what were your experiences? Because I know everybody is different. Everybody, the way, you know, whatever is coming through, everybody is different. Did, <laughs> did you have, uh, did you have issue for some reason with, with the use of symbols? Because I know a lot of times the Reiki practitioner will visualize one of the symbols, like say that spiral shape, right? 
visualize right. a symbol and then they'll they'll press the symbol itself into you and that that's supposed to help aid uh, whatever it is that they're working on with you right did you have some mm -hmm. some issue with the use of symbols yeah not like because I guess I have my own symbols that I've come up with like you know in the course of my life that I'll use for whatever you know but in terms of yeah I I have I have opinions <laughs> about okay about this <laughs> I you just can feel share. like yeah I just feel like they cut me off from it was either it's like the symbols the attunements is it the chicken is it the egg it cut me off from my own light it's like it turned off my own inner whatever it is like connection mm -hmm. my own inner you know like connection to my soul my spirit whatever and like turned on this like it's like a led light on a dark street is what i felt like you know because the just what happened in my life after i was attuned was like it was weird i was dealing with a lot more hauntings a lot more like mm, like beings trying to help me you know really? just okay interesting but, i'm but kind that of also could have to do with my teacher i mean that's the thing like it's you know it. everyone is different everyone is completely different with it when i when i was learning reiki mm -hmm. eden explained the the history of of reiki and and the symbols that they use and the whole genealogy of it and mm -hmm. i i just saw that i saw those things as kind of like interesting i didn't i didn't really like attach I would, like a good or bad yeah like the, it. it's just a part of it it's like taking a class and you know like or learning a learning chess like the chess pieces have names and you don't need the names to play the game but it's interesting you can you can use it for discussion but when i got into it when i started practicing myself i didn't really feel the need to use the symbols very much although i i could sometimes it was mainly like i wanted to feel the actual energy flow so if i'm you know, breathing the, so you breathe in the, the, the chi through your head, through your crown mm -hmm. chakra, and then mm -hmm. you breathe it out through your fingertips. That's how I learned it. And then yeah. that energy will go and interact with the person that you're working on with their body. And it will kind of act as a scan. And we actually do a scan, which you probably know about as well, but you can mm -hmm. scan beforehand and you'll feel, kind of find the, yeah, you'll feel disturbances. Find you'll feel like, hot or cold or there'll be a little bit of tingles or something and then you can sort of focus on the area once you figure out where everything's at but I never I never really saw I didn't get attached either way to the symbols it was just like that's kind good. of interesting that's awesome yeah I think like when you were talking about like the like universal energy like coming in through your crown and then pulling in your midsection coming out of your hands all that stuff like I kind of think that there's different kinds, like there's like, there's a mimic for everything, right? So there's, you know, like pure universal energy. And then I think sometimes some people, when they channel that energy, whatever that is, like they're not, like they're channeling like the, the blue light that's in our phones. And yeah, like, yeah, you, you might be pulling in the false light, the, the sort of archaic. That's, yeah. It's very that's, possible. That's the like umbrella under which I was trained, so that really characterized like my view of it, and that's why like I don't fuck with it. But I'm sure that depending on like, yeah, like depending on the teacher, depending on who trained you, like, like I was also assigned like spirit guides and stuff. I mean, it was just like I don't know, like Saint, like Saint Germain, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Have you heard of him? I've heard of him. What's he about? So, Tell me about Saint Germain. Apparently he's like a he was a French count, you know, and like had all of he was like a shapeshifter. He was a count. He was like whatever. a Dracula. I think that he was a count and like a French court. I mean, I don't, I don't really know. It was a long time ago when I was doing research into him, but I but I did like have like a working relationship, like a working magical relationship. I'm putting this in huge quotes with that being or an imposter of that being, like right and. It was January of 2020 when I, I was like, reveal yourself. I don't fucking trust you. Everything you tell me, <laughs> like, keeps me, like, tethered to, like, toxic dudes or shitty pro 
problems, you know? So it's like, are you here to help me? Like for real? So I just asked, I was like, I was like, show yourself, reveal yourself. And this fucking thing started to contort and like suddenly was not so pretty. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at his face, like in a lot of like the, like you go on Google images right now, you search like St. Germain and you look into his eyes and you look at his energy, like it's flat. It's like very, I don't know. I mean, I think about, I think when I look at the pictures, I could see that he's whatever he is is like AI assimilated, you know, like I'm going to look, I'm going to look real quick. Um, I'm going to share <laughs> You're the screen. You're going to pull up a picture. Yeah. Let's, let's see if we can find a, a picture of St. Germain real quick. Okay. And see what he looks like. I don't think I've ever seen any pictures. Oh my of gosh! Him. So how did you how did you get assigned to him? Your your Reiki teacher assigned you. Kind of yeah like yeah. Yeah, it says right here. Count. Can you see my screen? Yeah, I can see it. it says, but if you look at like some of the newer pictures, like some of those purple pink ones, like. If you just look at him, like, to me, like, like, okay, like, blow it up. Like, look into his eyes. Because, you know what I mean? Like, I know it's just a drawing, <laughs> but that looks like a robot, doesn't it? He's, he's got the, or, the piercing he's gaze. Perfect. Mm hmm And almost, like, and that level of, like, physical perfection reminds me of um, eugenics, actually. You know, so you, like, you think Saint Germain might be an AI? Uh, yeah, I think that a lot of like the quote unquote ascended masters or other beings or whatever. I don't know. I mean, I just don't. Yeah, like. Yeah. Okay. Very interesting. Um. What was I gonna say? Remember. I don't remember. Do it. You'll remember as soon as we move on in conversation, because that's how it works. <laughs> I know. It's like if you look at it, it's like when you're looking up at the stars and you see a dim one. If you look directly at it, it disappears, and then you just look a little bit to the right, it's back again in your peripheral. Uh, the mm. Chinese finger traps have I got it. I got it. Traps. Okay. Yay. So, you said you saw him, like, contorting, right? Or shape-shifting. How did you see this? Was this mind's eye, or, or were mind's you eye, tripping? Okay. Mind's eye? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, sometimes I'll have, like, full-sight experiences, but it's not very common, like, unless, like, my glasses are off and I've not been looking at the screen all day, like, mm -hmm. which, depending on the day, you know. Uh, so, yeah, mind's eye. Okay. Where, like, you kind of, like, close your eyes, but you're still in the same place. You can see, like, the, like, room around you. It, that's kind of how I, how I get into it. I don't know. Um, or it's like you can see through your eyelids, kind of, a little mm -hmm. bit. Like, plus or minus five mm -hmm. on either side, you know? Yeah, you can, you can, if it's really bright and you close your eyes, it's still bright behind your eyelids. Mm, totally. So... Yeah, like, I just, I saw him in that space where it's, like, I was looking into the room, but, like, through closed eyes. I don't know how else to really, like, describe that. But, um, but he, like, I saw, like, it was, like, the sort of, like, perfection, and like, the, like, perfect face, perfect eyes, perfect everything, you know, really, like, became, it, like, became this, like, ghoulish, like, uh, gray, black, like, mm. and then I just was like, get the fuck out of here, you're not even real, like, you, I don't know. Did he, then, did he say anything to you? Was there any communication when you were asking him to show himself? No, not really, it was just like, I guess when you test the spirits or whatever as we're called to do, you know, like, I feel like they kind of have to reveal themselves, I mean, obviously, like, maybe that's, like, idealistic, but in this situation, it happened, and um, and then a couple months later is when I had my big memory, you know, dumped. So that could have been, like, that could have been like something that was like keeping like that part of my mind locked, you know, to where yeah. like I wouldn't remember like some of the other civilizations and like this life weird shit and just stuff that I remembered, you know. So it's like. Mm, 
I don't know, like, to what extent are some of these beings, like, Galactic Federation, or, like, you know, like, to what extent are, like, these just, like, us, like, externalizing, like, our, you know, our essence, our power, our divinity, whatever. We anthropomorphize everything. It's kind of, it's it's funny to think about the idea of, of channeling, because if you just look at your your interpersonal relationships with real physical flesh and blood beings and you see how devious like some people can be when they're right in front of you then just like take that thought and put it to a a relationship with a being that you're not seeing physically and that they're claiming to be something or other like the possibility for boundaries and like your relationships with humans definitely like mirror and reflect like the boundaries that you have with like the spirit world and that was true for me and is true you know for sure i just imagine it would be a lot easier to get sort of duped by like an entity if you're trying to talk to them like through the astral or simply through some sort of uh like a uh, channeling something like that or even, even even reiki like all of the all of the practices i think are infiltrated to some extent by sort of nefarious entities I think so, too, and it's interesting, too, to think about, like, um, crap, 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 now I got the mind away. <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, okay, I remember. So, it's one thing I feel like if you see this Galactic Federation Pleiadian being, whatever, quote, like, in front of you, and, you know, and they say, like, for whatever reason, to deliver this message, I need to be inside of your body, and then you say, <laughs> okay. What? I know, like, because that's, I think, like, like, I've never, like, consciously done that, though I was encouraged by several people, you know, back in the day. It's like, oh, just move out of the way. Just move yourself out of the way, and then let whatever it is just come through you to deliver messages, (laughs) you know? And so, like, I don't know, man, like, that's one thing, right? Like, you make a conscious agreement of, like, it's kind of like making the agreement of you can be in my body whenever you want. You know, I think this is how a lot of people wind up with, like, occupants, you know? Yeah. Um, but I also think that people can, like, unconsciously channel beings, too. Like, okay, assuming that, like, somebody has never done any work in integration or embodiment or, like, whatever. I mean, there's so many routes to that, like there's all different paths, all different faiths, you know, to get to like the center of who you are and like to find awareness of your body and your consciousness in your body, you know, but like most people, I would say have like 20 to 30% of their consciousness in their body fully. Like, so what else is occupying that space? (laughs) It's really easy. You know, you never see people just like get really randomly angry or like, or kind of change slightly. Like, for me, I'm naturally kind of like a floating head, so I have to be really, really careful of this type of thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could just look at the vast majority of this, the population, and they seem like they're being run by something, right? It's not. It's if there if there is a so-called self, like divine spark, in there, it's hiding somewhere somewhere back in the recesses, and something else is moving them or automated. There's behind something, yeah. Yeah, it's 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 very confusing to try and imagine like what's actually driving a lot of these people. So how did you how did you get introduced to Reiki? How old were you? Who who introduced you to it? I'd rather not say who for the purposes of I've been talking shit. Um (laughs) but I was um gosh, I guess this was like 2016 I was like strongly encouraged to train under this lady um so not that long ago even you know and I've always kind of like felt like warm hands around animals or children or people who are like struggling so I think like I don't know I mean I've I've always yeah like we don't really need trainings or books or whatever right to access that Mm -hmm. we just need to be clear enough like I think but um, but yeah, so it was 2016 and I was trained in the first two levels and I practiced for like a year and a half until I like out of integrity had to say like, I can't do this anymore because it just doesn't seem like 
I mean, my clients were, because I do have, like, spark in me, you know, and I did at that time. Like, it was buried, a little bit more buried than it is now, but, like, but I had it, you know, so it was doing the thing that mm-hmm. it was doing, and that is good, and I didn't have any, like, any people, you know, but there have been times where I've received Reiki where, like, whatever health problem I was trying to address or emotional problem then became worse. So, yes, it is dependent upon who's working on you and... yeah. But. Yeah, if, if if the person who's working on you hasn't, even if they haven't done, like, the energy clearing thing properly since their last client, you're going to get some of that coming, because you're just acting as a conduit, and if there's something, like, in the conduit, as you're trying mm-hmm. to pass some energy through, then that's just going to, like, flow along with it and go into your body. But that's kind of, that's also very, very, like... I think people underestimate or like I maybe at times have underestimated and I've seen people just say, Oh, they'll just vibrate out of that frequency where they can't affect me. No entities. I am impervious. I don't have any entities. Uh But like, I have never met one person like that. Like even people who say that, right? Like, Oh, you're just not vibrating high enough. Like, I'm like, okay, well, what is that spider thing on your shoulder? You know, it's like, but, it's um yeah i think people like to believe that they're just okay all the time when yeah some, when sometimes they're not yeah i just i'm suspect of anyone who like professes perfection you know and mm-hmm. um very suspect of that and then also i think like yeah a little bit of I just think it's impossible to be fully clear here. I don't know, like, if that's even a thing. I don't even know if we're supposed to be. You know, I mean, I know right now there's a lot more opportunity than there was to, like, step out of patterns or out of, like, loops that we've been in for a long time, but... I don't I don't know about There's also the... a lot of targeting and, like, weird weaponized frequencies and an increased level of psychological warfare to account for the Mm -hmm. increased level of consciousness that we have access to so well don't forget that idea of going clear that's also in scientology right and that whole little scanning device like they i think you can use that as an access to people's energy field and then you know depending on your intentions you can do whatever you want with it Exactly. I think that thing is a tool. It's interesting. Like, and it's like, are you going to like, let the tool use you? Are you going to identify with all of the ideologies that come along with like getting clear, AKA paying thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to like, never get clear to like, they have just have like more levels, you know, depending on how much money you have though. I think you pay more like Brad Pitt will pay more. Um, it wasn't Brad Pitt. Was it Brad Pitt? No, it was... Uh, like Tom Cruise Tom or Cruise. something? Tom Cruise will pay more than, like, a, C- a C-level actor. True. And, yeah, I don't know. I think it's... But it's interesting. One of... So, I work sometimes with Akbil Saba. I don't know if you've ever heard yeah. of her or met her. Yeah, I've listened to a few of her videos. Yeah, mm-hmm. she's a good... She does good energy work. Really good. Um, so, I work with her, you know, from time to time, like, when I need, like, some assistance and... You know, so I worked with her, and, like, her and Rich, like, Rich uses one of those, like, Scientology tools. Really? And they do a great job together, you know? So it's, like, it really is, like, what you're going to do with it, I guess. Like, my my teacher has, like, a frequency app that she created that's extremely accurate, and it's scary accurate, and it's helpful. It's, like, Scalar Tech, I think. But it comes through the iPhone, you know, so it's like there's nothing like I, I don't know. It, it's don't be don't be the tool. Use the tool <laughs> or whatever. Are okay, this this is probably a silly question, but is there like a thing okay. is there like a thing with Rich and, and Oakville? Cause they're like way far apart in age, but but she's like living with him, isn't she? Or she was? Yeah, like I don't I mean, I have my, like, I have my intuitive feelings about that, but I don't want to, I, I can tell you later, or, like, I don't know, like, Too much drama but, for the show. I know, I'm like, ah, but, I mean, but honestly, like, when I look at them interacting, like, there is, like, a really beautiful, loving yeah, dynamic. Yeah. All of my boyfriends have been old, older. I was gonna say old. <laughs> Wait, how old is older? 
I mean, like, when I was 19, my first boyfriend was 41. What? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Dang. I don't know. I mean, I was also, like, 19 going on 80, you know, so it, like, <laughs> kind of made sense at the time, but, um, but yeah, mostly over 40, and I don't know why, like, but whenever I try to interact with dudes my age, it just doesn't work, so I don't know, but, well, so mo- I can't most of the, the age difference. Young people are super immature, and they have no attention span because of the technology, so... If you're yeah, sort I would of like a, myself in that group. <laughs> if you're if you're an ancient soul, then you're not gonna really get down with today's youth. Yeah, that's true. It's interesting. I was talking to Robert Phoenix a couple weeks ago. We did like I actually just randomly messaged him on Twitter, and he messaged back, and I was totally not expecting anything. But then that snowballed into like me recording with him too, and oh nice. It, yeah, it was good. It was really. I had a lot of like. It was. Yeah, it was really, really good. We talked for like a few hours actually, and we were talking about generational astrology and like, gosh, fuck, I feel for the Gen Zs. Like, I mm-hmm. really, really, really feel for them. Like, I was hanging out with them. Um, I have a voluntarist group that I gather with in my town, um, which is like a it's like a type of anarchy, like anarchy that like focuses on like consent based relational based type of like a physical you know, gathering community living huh a physical gathering yeah like nice. in person where we can like <laughs> i didn't know um, that i didn't know that existed to be honest with you yeah it probably exists in your area too um you know and we've just been like going all over planting gardens and like talking about bill gates and just, you know like so i don't know but um talking about what I'm he wants saying- to do with all that land that he's buying he probably wants to grow some soil and green for us so that we can all turn into cannibals. <laughs> oh my gosh, I had a coworker when I worked at this coffee shop for a few years who was like actually drinking Soylent. <laughs> it actually exists? Soylent? Yes, it's a thing. What is she it? She was like, this is future food, and I <laughs> was like, ugh. I mean, it's not made of like melted down humans, is it? That's what it was in the book, wasn't no. it? No. <laughs> Allegedly not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so I was gathering with this group, right, and, like, was chatting with, I was looking right in a mirror, too, because one of the ladies in this group is, like, has a 13-year-old daughter, and she's very, like, the daughter, like, enjoys, like, pop music, watches Trevor Noah, like, you know, identifies as A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? It has a whole different paradigm. And her her mom is trying to, like, force kind of the conspiracy angle, maybe doing it in a way that's, like, very, like, hard for, like, the daughter to actually, like, accept, you know? So maybe in a way <laughs> me hanging out with her daughter for a little while while the others planted was good because – you know, she could talk to someone who had, like, a nuanced, like... Yeah. And wasn't gonna, like... Okay, so what? So you like The Matrix. That's okay. Yeah, you yeah. Know, whatever, like... Try to de... And, de uh, what do you call it? De-escalate, like, thoughts around just alternative thinking. Really, like, a, that's a simple way to put it. Exactly. Or just, like... Yeah, just a reminder that, like, nuance is real. Like, you're not either, like, a neoconservative or, like, a neoliberal. You're not either totally unhinged, like, the government is coming for me yesterday, or, like, mm-hmm. you know, it, or, like, yes, I am totally and completely 100% safe in the loving arms of the government, you know? It's like, there's, there is nuance, you know? But, man, it was crazy because I was having an argument with my dad about, matrix stuff, health insurance, taxes, these types of things, but I am not going to say anything right now about what I, what, 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 what nothing. Does your dad watch, does your dad watch? Thank you, that's all. Huh? Is your dad going to watch this? I don't care. So who are... That's where I'm at right now. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't want to talk about it. If nobody well, no, that you know. I don't want to talk about like, wh- like taxes because I, mm. I just, Nothing. Never mind. It's more that than like talking <laughs> about my dad. No, he's never gonna see this probably. And like, I got you. Also, you know, whatever. But he's like kind of, he's kind of forcing this like matrix matrix like on me all my life, right? And not forcing, but he just thinks that that's what's best. Like that's how 
he grew up and like he grew up with those values and he's just trying to put those you know into my head right and that's Mm -hmm. fine I just don't care about material shit and I'm kind of I reject all of these things by nature so it's like even like before I was like more awake I wasn't really matrixy you know um or just didn't fucking care like about I just you know I was like oh I'll just, you know, have interesting dreams and Mm -hmm. not put any of the pieces together. (laughs) No, but, um, so when I was interacting with this girl, this 13 year old girl, I just, it was like looking in a reverse mirror because her mom was trying to force her out of the matrix, but she wanted to be a part of it. Like I have the opposite situation and it's just, I don't know. I just wanted to bring that up. Okay. It's a, it's it's a weird I think it's a weird topic in general before the current time but in the current time it's not actually as weird anymore because like no. like all the memes say you know I I've run out of conspiracy theories cuz they all came true so they're not conspiracy theories anymore. The, yeah, like, it's a it's a completely different dynamic now than it was, you know, 10 years ago. Yeah, for sure. I think Yeah, I'm I'm getting a little bit tired of being right and for me it hasn't even been that long like for you it's been like probably like it's been like what like 10 years something longer yeah Mm -hmm. it's yeah it's it's i watched zeitgeist back when i was like in my early 20s and at that point before i even watched that yeah before i watched that i was already questioning a bunch of stuff and and like i just saw i just saw the upside upside down nature of this reality pretty quickly and then i tried to talk to people about it and most of them poo-pooed it and you know so i went through that whole thing in my early 20s which is like 12 years ago nice we kind of feel it too like you can feel like when you go into a doctor's office compared to when you go into the woods like it's a different feeling and it's a different feeling for a reason you know and yeah the woods isn't requiring you to wear a mask to enter some places (laughs) you know not that it's not the woods requiring that though it's like the humans mm-hmm. humans wink but yeah so um so you're a gemini now well is that your vedic is that what andrea said i think so i had i had lavette do a reading for me and she said i'm gemini she said i'm not cancer but it, it's the what's your birthday july 3rd okay right on is that gemini I mean, it depends on the system. Like in in sidereal astrology, Vedic astrology, you're a Gemini. But in tropical astrology, which is like what I practice, most of Western civilization practices. But I mean, like who practices astrology? Like uh, would say that you're a Cancer. But like we're all everything. We're all born under a nice, whole ass night sky anyway, or day sky, depending on when you're born. Well, it's, do it's... you have your time of birth? Can I do your chart? Like yeah. I mean, like, or maybe some other time, like, could I, like, do it, like, on here? Like, on a show? Well, I mean, not, it doesn't have to be, like, a show, you know, but just, I don't know. Why not? Yeah, sure. Just think about it, no pressure. I've had it. I'm just curious. I've had the, I've had it, I think Lavette's was the first time I actually got it done, I believe. What were your thoughts? Um... I don't, I don't remember a lot of it. I still have it in the email, and I think she still has it up on her channel as, like, an unlisted video that mm-hmm. I can probably still access. Mm-hmm. But it was long. It was, like, two hours long. And it was just, like... I can't remember if I was too impressed or, or if it was just kind of, like, oh, somebody's, like, saying things that may vaguely relate to my life, and, you know, it doesn't... It doesn't seem or like to... a combination of both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was interesting. But I have. There's also an issue in my head with the the sim aspect. If we are yep. indeed in a sim, then then yep. you're not looking at physical bodies of gaseous, whatever, flying out in outer space. So therefore, how is? You are not on a spinning <laughs> ball at spinning at six six six. <laughs> I don't, I don't think so. Are you trying to say that? Like, are you trying to say that we're not on a, on a ball of rock and water? <laughs> An oblate spheroid? <laughs> um, yeah, no, I've, 
I'm so glad that we are talking about this. And actually, this has been something that, like, because I had, like, this, I think I told you about this the last time that we talked, um, so I won't tell the story again, but I did have, like, an, a really clean outer body experience that just changed everything. And it's, like, that's the whole thing about this upside-down thing. It's, like, don't believe what you see with your own eyes, with your own ears. You know, don't believe, like, what you experience. Believe this indoctrination instead, you know? Right. Um so I've kind of like, I've been on a journey of reconciling that because I'm an astrologer. What do you mean space is fake? <laughs> you know, like, or what do you mean space isn't what they tell us it is, you know? Yeah, that's going to so, screw with all of your calculations, right? Or maybe I mean, not guess, that, but... but then you, but so what kind of, so it started to like make itself known to me, like through just like my own inner realizations and stuff was like how... Like, I don't know, I guess I kind of, I feel like I've, I've seen from that vantage point, like, where we are, like, everybody has a different opinion, or everybody that's, like, maybe dipping into the nuance pool with us, right, has, like, a different opinion about what this realm is, or whatever, and, like, what planets are, but I was, like, mm-hmm. if, in the event that, like, you know, planets are just, like, other neighboring holodecks, for example, you know, or ships or realms, whatever, like, and they also have, like, their own frequency that they emit, then we are, like, beings of water, you know, we're made of a lot of water, Mm -hmm. and we are influenced and susceptible by, or to frequencies, you know, so I think that that, like, to me, I'm like, okay, planets as maybe dimensions that we can access to like that makes sense to me um you know but yeah i mean i kind of think astrology can be a program like in a number of different ways Mm -hmm. like so yes the sim aspect of that is real and i don't think astrology applies outside of this you know whatever you you think you think it's 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 specific and isolated to this realm Astrology? Not to Earth, no, not to Earth, but maybe to this like to solar the system. Like obviously, this solar system. Like I don't think that, like, I think that if so, say we we were to die, right? And we, because that happens sometimes here. <laughs> um, and then you know we like, say there's like no soul trap anymore or whatever. We get through, you know, and we break out. I don't think that if we were to like incarnate. Like, or if this is the end of this matrix, like, I don't think that... Well, we can't still... reincarnate back if, if it's dismantling itself, right? <sighs> yes, So then true. We, we would have to be able to see what lies beyond. True, but I feel like our next world is awesome. I don't know why. I just have that vibe. I've, I've tasted it. I hope so. Like, I don't know. I think I've had my, my fill of this room. Yeah, but... I don't know. I mean, I still feel like I haven't fully bloomed or blossomed or applied myself to like really make the most of even what's here like yeah and that's not like I think that there's this misconception that you can't be a little hard on yourself you know and I think that I don't know I just I'm I've become a little bit like of a hard ass on myself where I'm like okay girl like you when you put your attention somewhere like flowers bloom so why like why aren't you (laughs) and focusing on like Mm -hmm. you know so or or like really applying myself to with like with action you know and and learning like I still feel like I have more to learn maybe the last time we talked I was like get me the fuck out of here I was also like speaking of the astrology program I was still like super deep in my Saturn return at that time and so I was like feeling the pressure and the density and like the fucking like like quicksand you know Mm -hmm. but it's um but i don't know now i'm like okay maybe i have more to learn maybe i have more to experience here that's good if there is an exit point for me cool i've already like uh, my soul family is gonna you know meet me out out in the field beyond wrongdoing and right doing what yeah i i have a feeling that that you're your feeling state when you exit, when you die, you know, when whatever, when you pop out of the pod, probably is important 
determining where you go next because if you're like i hate this i hate life i hate everything you're probably going to go to a place that matches that frequency that's true yeah i think so too you know and i wonder like i don't really know this and now i'm just like I'm postulating and like, you know, just uh, like musing about it. But I wonder mm. like how much, like how much conscious choice even our soul has of like where we go or are we just choosing now with what we're choosing, right? Because every, uh, the bifurcation is happening. Mm -hmm. I think that there are a lot of people though that are still in the middle or like trying to be in the middle, just and I think, I mean, you know, that's going to stand up for not too much longer, probably, right? Like, I don't know. I don't know where this is going, to be honest. I mean, when me I say either. this, I mean out there. Like, I have my ideas, but... I mean, everyone has always said that this is the greatest time to be alive, and this is when the Great Awakening is happening, and, you know, like, this is the show, pull out your popcorn, like... Mm -hmm. People have been saying that for for a long time, and I never really believed it for the most part. But this whole thing that's been happening over the last year or two, that's it's a something. You can't say, oh, another nothing burger. This is actually something. It's not a positive yeah. thing necessarily, but right. it's it's a big fat thing that's definitely lodged itself in everyone's mind, not their body, their mind. <laughs> it's a mental oh, virus. Yeah. Oh, it's totally, like, 100% mental and digital from what I've, like, kind of just been intuiting and seeing. Even the the transmission of the thing. Straight through the TV, right? Huh? Straight through the TV. Exactly. That's how I see it, I mean. <laughs> and then people who are, like, getting the thing that we talk about on some of these channels at times. <laughs> Even the transmission from that seems to be, like, just digital. Yeah. Oh my and, gosh, and it, that reminds me. What? Hmm? I don't know. What were you going to say? Oh, I was just going to say it's, it's, uh, this whole, the whole stage is set in technology going through the roof at an exponentially increasing rate. Yeah. And uh, everything, like, robotics mm -hmm. doing more tasks. We're not moving into a, a utopia because the machines are doing all the work. The The work week has increased in hours on average with the technology going up. So you see that the, the people in the controller side of it are not saying, oh, well, we have tools now to make everyone prosperous. Let's make everyone prosperous. That's not happening. Not yet. With the... It's like, I don't know, man, like there's something going on here, but then there's something going on back here. I don't think we've seen like the deceptions yet, even like, I mean, obviously like Sharona is a deception, but based on like the astrology of next year, oh my God, like April, oh, big, big, big deception energy. And so, you know how like in the, like, I don't really like, I'm not a Christian or anything, but. I do like to look at the Bible from now and again, you know, mm -hmm. get back in touch with my roots. But uh, I'll look at it every now and again. And um, the other day, I, fuck, I just lost my train of thought again. Looking at the Bible, getting mm -hmm. back to your roots. But before that. Shit. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, well. Oh, 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 oh. I remember. Okay. I remember. So it's like the whole like deceiving of the elect thing i don't know who the elect is by the people who wrote that or whatever but people are like thinking that this sharona is like the thing that's supposed to deceive the elect right and i i don't see many elect who i would consider to be like quote unquote elect like i don't see too many people like deceived you know mm-hmm people are like no that's really fake as fuck like it's obvious <laughs> but you know like yeah, it's 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 kind of weird because there the deceptions have been decent. They've been decent at least up until this point. This one is not decent. This one along with the Biden camel toe combo duo, along with that You got to be careful or you're going to be put away for descent. <laughs> 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 no, I I fucking I talk shit about that all the time. Like But honestly, like I've been looking a little bit at what's so what's been happening with like the like audit situation and i'm like oh arizona now that's audit. interesting is that well, that's supposed to be, to be like a, a thing right arizona audit is supposed to be a 
an actual... Allegedly. I mean, I'm not too invested in it. Like, I've made, like, moves to, like, get out onto land. I'm gonna get with my best friend a, like, single-wide, like, two-bedroom trailer. Like, we are going to look at it next week. Um, and we're gonna grow a fuck-ton of food, can a mm-hmm. fuck-ton of things. Like, we're gonna, you know, and, and maybe also, I mean... I saw a video the other day of a 14-year-old creating free energy out of his garage on TikTok, you know what I mean? So it's like, this; these things are possible, you know? So oh, yeah. I'm not really super invested in it, but I do think it would be a hell of a loose harvest. And it would also create a bunch of unrest, which, like, would benefit, you know... What would be a loose harvest? Oh, if, if, if the election results were overturned? Oh, yeah. Which I've been thinking, like, is... A, I thought that that could be a possibility. And also, that's where I think the deception could come in, too. Because it's like, here's all this, like... Because all, all of the people who've been waiting for something to happen would be like, oh my god, we gotta win! And they might slip something else underneath there, right? That's... Oh no, cousin, are you okay? My poor cat. Okay, so... Um, yeah, no, that's what I've been thinking, like, really since I saw the, like, whole... 17th letter movement thing was just kind of like that's weird like that's a savior (laughs) program and too like I think mm, like the whole like giving back the technology giving back the like all the money like all of that stuff I am like what does that come with like and who's bringing that forward you know because I do think like I wonder if they're just going to completely like shut out the existence of ETs like or like if they're going to do a big whole grand ET thing a, you grand, know? a grand reveal Whatever in the sky is. yeah yeah like fake space bearing or fairing culture or you know I don't know but it, maybe the real yeah. maybe the actual ETs could come and, and just turn everyone's table and it won't be a fake alien invasion and we'll have actual like visible beings that See, like, we've had so much stupid shit being projected and forecasted, and a lot of stupid shit is actually happening as well. It's not just people saying this might happen. A lot of dumb things are happening. Like, I think it would be a nice little twist if just something reasonable happened where we're, oh, yeah. we're shown an actual yeah. other being. Other beings are materialized, and they, they can talk with us, and it's just not this whole, oh, okay, we're moving the slavery game on another level, and everyone take up, line up, and take a chip, or... Get your barcode, yeah. Yeah, like let's let's have something just that 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 flips the tables a little bit. I am totally not opposed to like a plot twist on any like on any level. Like yeah. I think a lot of like, I mean, it is kind of like I kind of see it as a script, you know. So I'm not sure like once the button is pressed, like how I don't know. But also, you know, you know, you never know because the machine is kind of you know. Well, it takes our input. Like, this realm does take our input. So we also can wield and maneuver and bring different possible outcomes. Just by talking about it, we're also seeding the, the, the possibilities, right? Yeah, I think it's good to remember, like, your own creative potential. And I guess, like, for me, I'm so open to a plot twist. Like, one of the plot twists that I've considered airy is the plot twist of like that they have to quarantine the 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 people who have taken the thing Mm -hmm. and it's like a kind of like a hegelian dialectic that actually like puts the awake people like i don't know not not as the villains finally yeah like (laughs) i doubt that like i i don't know i mean but that would be an awesome you know that's kind of like the people who are thinking that are like really like diving into like the zombie like line of thought and like mm-hmm. the zom- like the full on like zombie apocalypse yeah. situation. And even that I wouldn't I mean, I don't know, man. Like I've just kind of like I've resigned myself to experiencing whatever it is that I'm meant to experience here. But I have my personal convictions about what I won't do, you know. Um I'm very conflicted about crypto um and like digital money, like in general but I was also conflicted about fiat. Like, I've never been, like, I don't know. I. That's that, like, that's that's another good topic for, for another show. We're actually coming up um, to 
we're a little over 45 minutes, so I wanted to wrap the first segment and also uh, we talked a little bit about something you might offer to possible patrons yes. if you want to go into yeah, that. So, totally. So if you guys watching this at any time want to join Gary's Patreon, the next segment we're going to talk a little a little bit more about astrology. It might be like more of like a quote-unquote focused talk um but additionally i am offering for anyone who joins the patreon just a, a discount on a reading like 20 i think 20 bucks off a 30 minute reading is what we decided so yeah if you're interested in getting you know a 30 minute astrology reading there's many different things that we can talk about like some people want to talk outer stuff like love, relationships, communi- like communication, interpersonal. You said a lot career. of a lot of your clients end up wanting to ask. Oh no, that wasn't you. That was Guy Three. Sorry, Guy Three. Mm-hmm. Guy Three said a lot of people just wanted to find out about like possible romantic things. Oh my gosh! So the soulmate industrial complex is very real, <laughs> um, for sure. Like, and yeah, I, I would say that's pretty true, though. For the most part, like. In my personal practice, people know at this point, especially in my town, that I'm not really going to, like, entertain, like... You're not going to push the twin flame thing on people? Is that what you're saying? Well, that's a whole other, you know, (laughs) that's a whole other thing. But, yeah, people really, like, do want me at times to make their whole entire reading about them. I kind of think that, like, it's... I look at it as like outer space is inner space because it is, you know. So right. I just, yeah. The secret space program is in here, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> the big. You say the secret space program is in here? That's the big secret. Don't tell anybody. Oh my gosh! Well, it's all in here, <laughs> right? But I know what you're saying. Yeah. So thank you guys. Well, for... not necessarily. If you're going out of body and you're still still able to experience, then reality is not confined within your your brain imagination maybe imagination True. is not confined to the brain maybe that's what we're actually saying shit all right well cool <laughs> well thanks everybody for tuning in and yeah um, we'll see we'll, we'll see anyone you on the other side. anyone who wants to catch hold of the the patron segment it's only six dollars a month and oh, that's not bad and uh meredith is throwing in a discount for anyone that signs up um mm-hmm. Yeah, anyone that signs up yeah. between now and when the next show airs, uh, Meredith will give a, a discount too. I don't have to put a limit on the time. No. But yes, but yes, sign up now. Just sign up just today. just mention just mention that you saw the the golden snails. Mhm. That should be enough. Not golden snail. Not golden spiral. I'm getting golden all my spiral. names getting all my names confused. Mention to yeah to Meredith that you saw the show. Golden snails not bad. I thought um, I thought of calling it the Golden Snails, but I, I decided on Golden Spiral because there is a spiral in the snail, and also it's it's uh, related to the Golden Ratio, which is mm-hmm. what, so what I tried to. Can I ask you a question about that before we break? Mm-hmm. Um, what is like what is the snail to you? Like, is that like a totem, or like <laughs> is that like a slow and steady wins the race kind of thing? kind of a little bit like that like the snail is not rushed the snail just goes slow but does what it's trying to do mm-hmm. but it's there's not really a, a deep reason for it it's just spongebob there's a the snail is oh. called gary that's the yeah, main that's the main that. reason for it <laughs> oh. yeah awesome so thank you meredith we're gonna have a short break now and we'll see uh, everybody else over on the patron segment Peace. Okay, I need to turn this off. Give me just a sec. You need to create a new meeting? One sec. Okay.